Hi, welcome back to Motor Mouse. I'm Mike from Motor Performance. James from the Performance Company. And you are? Matt Armstrong. From Matt Armstrong. From Matt Armstrong. From, Matt Armstrong. <laughs> from, <laughs> from YouTube. <laughs> from YouTube, exactly. So, um, previous guest was Chiro, so thank you very much. If you've watched that one, if not, link below is to watch that one. And um, we brought Matt along today to talk about the business of YouTube. And the reason why we picked Matt is he is flying. In no other words, at the minute, currently flying and doing some really interesting things on YouTube to promote his business and to build his business on YouTube. Yeah. So Matt, just uh, explain a little bit about where you are now and then we'll talk about what cars you're driving, the future and uh, how it kind of started. What have you come in today? M4, crash damaged M4, uh, came in today which I bought yeah, from some sketchy guy in London <laughs> which we'll get into, <laughs> but that was absolutely battered again, rebuilt it and Sort of fell in love with it, really. Not, never, never been a fan of them, and since driving it, I don't want to get rid of it. We heard so, it arrive. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's noisy, but it's comfortable. It's, it's quick. I, I love the car. Good it's good. Car. It's good. good. But that's yeah, that's sort of the main part of it. Building crash damaged cars for myself, and well, now it's just turned into sort of like entertainment as well. But. Yeah, no. To buy a crash damaged car, I know nothing about a crash damaged car. But obviously, I know you get different categories. But surely that's taken a risk because most people will buy a stock M4 and put it on their video or their YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Do the parts you're already doing, but you, if you imagine they're halfway through their build of their car because they've bought a standard car, you buy a crash damaged car and then you build it up to the same point they're at. And then modify it. Yeah, then exactly. Modify so, it. Yeah. So, yeah. so you get more videos out of That's it. That's. Well, YouTube wise, I feel like crash damage car is more interesting because yeah, yeah. you do get more content content out of it because it's crash damage, so you can film repairing it. And then once you film repairing it and all the fun things that come with it, I also am learning when I'm doing that as well because it doesn't go as straightforward as when you're modifying. I was going to say, car. have you been trained as a mechanic or, or body well, you work or? So from the start, like going back, uh, my dad's a mechanic. It was like a mobile mechanic. Worked from home and. Like had a garage to rent out of this, that, and the other. Whilst I was um, like young, I was like 16, 17. I was mainly BMXing. I was at sixth form at college, and, but I was only there because I didn't know what to do. I was just winging it as I went along, as I, well, as I do now, <laughs> really. We still, <laughs> we still do. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then, um, yeah, I just decided, well, I kept skipping sixth form to go rob my BMX, competing everywhere, this, that, and the other. End up getting, well, they said either I sit the exams in, in sixth form, else I'll get a fine, or basically that's it. So I had to, I had to sit the exams, but I had 40% attendance, so I didn't know what was going on. I got all used, but well, I sat it. So it is. And then, yeah, and then they said you can't stay on an extra year, so I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, weirdly enough, I was like, really, I, I did uh, media in sixth form, and that was the only one thing I enjoyed, filming stuff, taking photos, and that's kind of helped me now because of that um, and but at the time it was helping me with my BMX in so I learned how to edit I learned how to like film edit photos do you Photoshop. still do your own editing now I do everything wow. myself yeah um, so so that is just a quick message because I key, think it's yeah. GCSE result time at the moment oh yeah so even yeah. if you get straight use you could still be a Matt Armstrong. Yeah, that's it. And you could buy BMX. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. The, my main thing was BMX. Be, be, I've always been into cars, and I think it's a natural thing. I mean, if you mess around with BMX, you mess around with bikes, as soon as you get a car, you're the same. Yeah. And it's just, I'm the same with everything. You know, you'll give me something, and I'll start taking it apart because I'll be like, oh, I want to have a look. And it's well, the same with me. Look at all the tattoos, because I'm like, I can't leave myself alone. You know, I need to, <laughs> I need to do something. I need to modify more. something. And yeah, I was always into BMX and the media side helped me be able to film stuff, put on YouTube and at the time when I was riding to get into competitions, sometimes it was like invite only competitions. So you'd have to um, film a video, like a 60 second video, upload it onto YouTube with all your best tricks and everything, uh, send it to the competition and if they were like, right, you're good enough or you're not, then that decides whether you go to the competition okay. or you get sponsored. So that's sort of... So your YouTube channel started just with BMX? Just with BMX in, yeah. Nothing to do with cars. Can you still ride a BMX? I like to think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think so. So the cars fails, you can go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it started with that and um, just that's the way it went. And then I think people like watching BMX, but it's such a small audience it doesn't really appeal to loads and loads of people unless you're doing something absolutely wild um like which would appeal to a much wider audience so it never really got that huge following of it it's just a 
big in the BMX world sort of thing. Um, there are quite a few people in BMX worlds in our industry now. Oh, yeah. S30 that's BMX it. up in Scotland. Yeah, um, yeah. Ryan Taylor. Yeah, There's again, quite a few yeah. BMXs so that have... Ryan was sort of the bad influence with me, me as well. So he was, uh, well, he's a massive YouTuber now, and he was literally scarving school, like, pretty much, well, he scarved school <laughs> full stop. I used to actually go some days, whereas he, we were saying, right, every Wednesday, we went to Birmingham, skate park and it was creation it was an old bus stop or something like that. an old bus shelter which got changed into a skate park and we just used to arrange every wednesday get there we used to get on the train with the bikes never pay for a ticket and ride there <laughs> every wednesday and uh, i remember being put to a meeting in sixth form and they're saying why are you never here on wednesdays and we used to say oh it's birmingham wednesdays isn't it that's what it is <laughs> it's, it's, birmingham right. wednesday. It, it's weird how it's all worked its way yeah. back round. he got into youtube i got into youtube but i, d I don't know i don't it's strange, but I never thought of it being a job. I never thought of it being a full-time job. It, it has. It happened. wasn't for quite a long time. It's only relatively no, recently. No. That's it. That's it. And um, like my sort of well, again coming back to it, left sixth form, um, and the way I got into cars, I think I sort of learned to drive. Um, I always thought, oh, my dad might buy me a car, and when it came to passing my test, it was like, you've got to save up for a car now. It's bloody hell. <laughs> I had the same. Yeah, so <laughs> I bought a £200 Fiesta and obviously it kept breaking all the time and my dad wanted me to learn how to fix it myself rather than constantly rely on him to do it. Um, so it, if anything was wrong, he'd just say, right, this is wrong, this is how you fix it. And then I think I just enjoyed doing that. I think doing it yourself? Like a, yeah, like it would just show me, I remember it come down to it on that Fiesta, it was a 1.1 litre, and I remember we had to change the engine at one point, it got to that point, and my mum was like, shouting to my dad, like, why don't you just buy him a new car? I said, no, he's got to learn it. And we took the engine out, I remember him tipexing all the bolts that I need to undo, and I was just there on the driveway, just undoing bolts, no idea what I'm doing, but then you just learn as you go along. Learn on the job. I don't, I, I don't know what, I just enjoyed, I don't know why I enjoyed it, but I just liked it yeah. how it worked and then it's the satisfaction afterwards i think that's what got me buzzing about doing it and obviously when you're 17 18 you have no money so i just wanted to like modify the car make it look the best so i was taking the springs out chopping so you did start modifying here. that first car did oh you, oh, you oh, should yeah. see it you should see that car. if you've seen that car oh my god it, like well, yeah, it's it? a reflection 1993 Ford Fiesta. It's a Mark III. Oh, so, yeah. so RS Turbo bits you're trying to find. Yeah, and yeah, RS Turbo bits. Oh, I wish I had a photo of it. Well, but that would make a good video. I my went, first yeah. car. <laughs> Buying it back. I went to my friend had like a back garden which was like sheltered. I went in there, taped up all the windows, and a rattle canned it, sat in black, and then <laughs> I had about oh, two coils of springs on it because I had it on the floor. 13 inch Ford Capri wheels. It was absolutely. Oh, the and, pepper and, pot ones. Yeah, yeah. And, and they used to have those HID lights, you know, the really bright yeah. lights, and uh, there used to be um, train track crossing near where I live. I remember going over there and it used to bounce like that, constantly like that. And going over there and bouncing, everyone used to think I'm flashing them. Oh, because the headlamp just bouncing yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, but oh, that was quality. I think it just started from there. I think you have so much fun doing it and driving it around. And like, I it's weird. I can't quite place why you enjoy doing it, but it, it just amazing. makes you so happy to do it. I don't know why. When I was a kid, we were changing engines. We put, uh, I put a two litre 16 valve in a Nova. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so like red top uh, nervous. Watched it. I was going to say, yeah, I didn't do it. I haven't changed any of <laughs> it. I think I did the rear dampers on it. Anyway, um, but yeah, that's the sort of thing. And then it kind of went, well, now people don't, they do modify cars, but no one changes engines now. No, not really. No, no, it's, that's, it's it's not, uh, that's the thing. I'm guessing we'll probably get onto that, but UK wise, I mean, people, I think people are so worried about warranties and like yeah. all that sort of, I think hence the Liberty Walk things, you don't see 9 million Liberty Walk cars on the road no. because people are so held off by it and yeah. I don't I don't know what it is, I don't, people just need to get over themselves from, in my opinion, I just think it's Spring like, spacers and Maxton splitters. Yeah. I made a business out of that. Yeah, <laughs> that, I mean that, that's cool but every yeah. car does, I think people exactly. should just be willing to just go and for it. And they do in do the it. States, there's many, oh, it's huge in America. I don't know whether they're brave, I don't know whether they've got the better roads for it, but but there is just a more passion for major wholesale changes. Yeah, Individuality, yeah. It's been, changing the car. It's, Americans are naturally loud people anyway, and they're loud, proud, they're like, 
and I think that's what it represents in, in the cars. It comes across with the cars. If they, they do something, they go full out, they go full send, and they do it. And I love, I love that. I love how yeah. they do that sort of and, stuff. And you've but done then, exactly yeah. that. We'll touch base on it in a bit, but you almost mimic what a lot of the Americans do. Oh, nobody yeah. Nobody else in the UK does. I think because I only watch you Americans you want to be on American. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm exactly. wait, I've got my blue passport in there. I'm ready to go. go, go exactly, I'm, re yeah. I'm ready to go. I just can't. You wanted to. We, we, well, we'll come on to that because we had a conversation about getting cars over to the US. Yeah. But we'll come to that. So what was your first automotive upload on youtube if you can at all remember what what, what made you go do you know so, I'm, I'm doing bmx's but i'm gonna put this car video up um what did can I you remember first i think i uploaded very very first i had an e350 mercedes like a, a, a diesel yeah. yeah i'm sure it was an e350 mercedes i don't know why did i do that <laughs> I know there might have been something before i might find it on there you you might have been something before where i just i think i randomly thought you know like what i saw all the bmx's uploading stuff on cars and i thought i wonder if anyone's interested in this and at that like, point did you have aspirations to be a youtuber or no. was you just going hey i've got a youtube account let's put what i'm interested yeah, in yeah so like my <laughs> lowered my mercedes E3, uh, 350 pound Ibex rings. So was that it? Was that? Yeah. And all the rest It is... was. Yeah. yeah, and then modified E350. Oh, wait, that was how to... Lower Mark Oh, Golf R, um, yeah. Golf GTI, Mark 7, E350, E350. Yeah. But that did quite... We did good views on 76,000. Oh, they're doing good views. Yeah, yeah, because it's a fitting exhaust on E350. Okay, yeah, so that was it. I remember... So I, I didn't have any... I wasn't always set on, I'm going to be a YouTuber. I didn't know that that was... A thing. I didn't know how much money was in it. I didn't know you could actually make a living from it. And obviously, coming out of college with like not really anything, um, my sort of plan was, I sort of, well, Dad, I'm going to work with you, and I'm just going to learn how to do the cars, and then I'll take over your business and go from there. That was my plan. Yeah. As I was working for him, he sort of, because he likes me to do everything myself and learn myself and do everything. He didn't really. I don't think he actually liked me working for him. He wanted me to go out and do my own thing and go to college and learn mechanics myself so then I could go off and do it myself do it rather than working for him because he's seen, I guess, a lot of his friends, his kids work for and just not really gone to anything. It's different when you work for family, isn't it? But yeah. um, So I, that was my plan. My BMX got one thing into another into another and I ended up doing that full time for a while until I got injured. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I was always filming YouTube, filmed up the yeah first little bits on me, 350 and stuff, and then Again, they weren't that, at the time, wasn't very good views. It wasn't amazing, a couple hundred views here, there, whatever. It wasn't amazing, but I just used to do it in between working. And then um, the one thing that really like kicked it off, the whole thing off was um, my girlfriend, Hannah, she had a Audi TT. She, like, she's all been into cars, her dad's into cars, she's into cars. And uh, her first like, big purchase was an, an Audi TT, uh, Mark II, and on the way home, uh, when she was driving home from work, she had a smash on a roundabout. And I remember she ringing me, she said, I've had a crash, an accident, blah, blah, blah. So, so I went down, had a look at it, and I thought, well, it's not actually that bad. Like, and um, I was surprised when the insurance came around and assessed it and said, oh, it's a write-off. I was like, how is, it a, how is that a write-off? Yeah. And I said, ask them how much it is to buy it back off them. And it was a four and a half grand car she got paid out for it and they wanted 600 pound for it for it back no. and i was like that is a no-brainer i was like i'm just gonna I'm do gonna it buy that. yeah i was yeah. like i'm just gonna do it and at the time when i was like normally i was used to modifying cars like taking your springs off putting your springs on or repairing stuff never done anything really crash damage so um i just got a camera and started filming stuff just because it would help me Went to put it back together. So if I, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so if I started taking it apart, yeah, I could watch it back home, and then I could look. Oh, that's that's how that went together. Or that went off, and then also what I used to do as well is watch the videos back, and then I could also see what parts I needed. When I got home, I could look. I said, oh yeah, that bit's bent, and it would remind me what to do. And I thought, you know, what, I'll upload it onto YouTube, yeah. see if anyone's interested, and start like a little series on it, see if anyone's interested, and then. The view from that Audi TT, I think I was getting like a thousand, two thousand views each video. People were interested in yeah, it, no. and I sort of learned to be behind a camera from there. It's not like a, a natural thing. It's not like a you get behind a camera and like, oh hi guys, I'm back to you. It was just 
you just learn as you go along and become more now I talk to a camera better than people I think like I'm just more comfortable I th I, do you know what I, and I read a lot of your, the comments as well and I think a lot of people talk about how personable you are how approachable you are on YouTube replying to questions replying to comments yeah and yeah. it's very you're very approachable in that term in that sort of respect so I feel your followers have a more of a connection yeah if you like that's, as a I've, friend my mate I on YouTube like, yeah I would feel personally that my like community on YouTube is like a really good one you know like I think well, I think they want to be you. I think they want to wish that they could buy a crash well, they, this or is where to think, store it to have their own unit. I think people wish they yeah, could do they, that. Yeah, that's it. They, they love the idea of it and it's like a childhood dream and that's why I'm just living it yeah, and they're yeah. living through it. So yeah. that's why I was explaining to other YouTubers as well why I, like, they were saying, oh, why don't you get a better mic? Why don't you get like, mics like this? Because it, um, y your sound quality is better. I said, well, I don't do that because you know, I could have the camera all the way over there and I'll be talking and it's clear as anything. I was like, I want people to feel like they're in the unit with me, they're at that time yeah. with me. If they're standing over there, they're not going to hear me clearly. I'm going to be shouting at yeah, them. Yeah. That's why I always hold the camera so close to me like that. They feel like they're with me. When I'm down working on the car, the camera's next to me and they feel like they're working. Because that's how I've always, when I've watched other people do it, I feel, oh, I feel like I'm working on the car nah, doing this. Good. Because it's, it's a good way to you've got it. to imagine it that that's the person watching it. And I feel that's why the people, my audience feels so connected because they're going through everything I'm going through. It's they're not a full what... choreographed scene. Yeah, it, yeah. It Instead is, of... this is me here and now doing the sort of work that you they're can do. They're seeing everything. Instead yeah. of it, not like a GoPro on my head, like it's, they're watching my thing. They're almost on your in the unit yeah. with me. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. talk to the camera as if I'm talking to a person yeah. in the unit, although it's hundreds of thousands of people, which sounds <laughs> mad, but yeah. that's how I see it. I do, and I think, I feel it's much better connection. I mean, you can make things look really professional and have like posh mics and yeah. nice camera shots and that. But I think with YouTube, you, it's... if you do that once, they'll expect it all yes, the time. And then if you do it. your own editing, that's much it. time do you? Yeah. I must that's say it. though, the, the editing and 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 the inf one of the videos I watched and really enjoyed was the two Liberty Walk cars on your road trip. Yeah, oh, the, I love the, doing the, that. Uh, where was it? Steepest road in the, in the UK, <laughs> yeah, in Bristol. Yeah. <laughs> the editing was, one was amazing, <laughs> but then even the, the trying to drive a car down, but then you just had a little yeah, just like of a car, like, yeah. Yeah. bumping down. But, it was brilliant. Well, it was comical. It was enjoyable. That's the thing as well that, that sort of came with. Not only have learned on the cars and I've learned like how to repair them and everything. I've also learned more how better editing videos, how to film them better. And it's sort of a whole process. I'm sort of against people outsourcing editing and outsourcing mm. because I feel I'm meant to be a creator. And if you if you're a creator, but you're not editing your own videos, you're not like um, editing your own photos or that sort of stuff. How much of a creator really are you? If you, I feel like you've got to be yeah, a full. You're a presenter, you've got to otherwise. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah you're, you're, just, face. you're just a presenter. Yeah, then. That's like, exactly I'm that. a creator. I do everything, and uh, and I can't imagine it another way. Well, like, whatever you're doing is obviously so, working because you have had a huge growth over the past. I don't know. What, what shall we say? Twelve months? Do would you no, say? Longer than since you had your S five, S five, which was two years ago. That long ago now, but it's things like you, you, you do th you do things like, and this is not going to say uh, the reason why you've had massive growth is the way I see it is you buy stuff that people would love but don't dare. Yeah, but yeah. you've done it as a business decision. Now, if it was not Matt Armstrong the YouTuber, but Matt Armstrong, if I said, hey, you're going to go out and buy a crash damaged Bentley, be no, you're right, mate. But Matt yeah. Armstrong the YouTube business side of you goes, hey, I want to buy that, and it clearly Just shows. Just send it, it yeah. yeah, because. You know, I, I think last well, one of the times I spoke to you, you had a Q5 as a daily. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if this thing doesn't, it, you have to wait apart from, you know, That's Jeremy it. to come through for the Bentley because you've got something else to go home in. These That's people, it. That, it, do you understand what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, definitely, if yeah. it's the only one car, you can't really do it. But if it's the business, you buy whatever's going to get you attention. Yeah, yeah. So my car, like my car choices are now really based on YouTube side of things. Although they are cars. They are based on YouTube, but they're also cars that I really want. But if you're a petrolhead, yeah. you don't make sense. If you're a petrolhead, you want to drive one of everything. Yes, that's yeah, it. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. So it doesn't but matter what it is. Like if it's a GT86 or. We was going to ask that. Yeah. What? What make? What makes you decide what cars to buy? Is it the passion for the car? I want to drive and deal that car, or is it? I think I know what's going to do well on YouTube. It is really 
it's 50 50 yeah. i i'll look at a car and think i i, I absolutely love that car and I tell you, it's really, most of the cars that I really like do well on YouTube. So I think it's. I think what happens is if I start choosing cars based on what I think other people are going to like, it's not going to work. No. Like, be, and like at the minute, I know a lot of the hot hatches that I do do really well. They do really good views. But I know if I consistently do hot hatch hot after hot hatch after hot hatch, I'll stop enjoying it, and people will see that. They'll see yeah, me. Yeah. Oh, I've just got another Golf R again. Because at the minute you have. It. A hot hatch M140. Yeah, yeah. GT86. Yeah. M4. Yeah. Maserati. Yeah. I don't know what your missus is driving. RS5. We just RS5. got yeah, RS5. new RS5. RS5. Yeah. yeah. The, and then you obviously you've got Lambo. Lambo as well. So you've got oh, six cars. Twin turbo. And I just Lambo. bought another one yesterday. Oh, really? <laughs> when does that go live? Tuesday. Oh, this, our podcast the week after, so you can tell us what it is. Oh, okay. Uh, E46 M3. Good lad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've seen the post. <laughs> yeah. Was it that Laguna Seca Laguna Blue Seca one? Laguna Seca Blue, yeah. Oh. Um, is it kind of damaged? No, but it's had the life rushed out of it. Um, the only thing I knew about these cars before was that, obviously, I used to work in an Indian restaurant, and <laughs> the two bosses Adam. there both had E46 M3s, and I remember whenever they had an issue with them, they always used to say, oh, can you just go and have a look at it? Because obviously I used to mess around with cars, so I used to play around with them then, and I knew one from that, and it all happened from like, we went to this like drift slash track event day, track experience day, and um, as they took us out onto the track, we drove past loads of these cars, which were all like parked up, looked abandoned, like sitting there with loads of dust on. I said, what are all these? cars here for and it says oh there we call it Dubai because it's just like an abandoned cars like all supercars and everything I said oh can I have a look when we finish I said yeah walk round them and there was like Bentleys then and like there was Gallardos and I was asking like what was up with each one and then everyone had their own issue and I said what's up with this E46 M3 and they said nothing they said it runs it drives but the subframe where it mounts to the chassis oh, which is really common on it's it's Rips cracked through. yeah it's um it's all cracked and it's had the life beaten out of it. I mean, like the seats are knackered, this, that, and the other. Um, but I thought, oh, this was really good. And I thought, you know what? I post it on my Instagram and I'll see. I was like, I don't want to buy another car. I've got too many. I've not n got no room. Posted it on my Instagram and I was just having messages beyond really? belief. You know, I was having like BMW um, like specialists messaging me like, how much is that because I want to buy it? And I was like, well, how much do you think it'd be worth when it's done? And it was like, that's a 20, 25 grand car when it's done. And I was like, really? I asked, I asked the guy like, is this for sale? He says, well, anything's for sale at a price. And he wanted 10 grand for it. I got him to nine and a half. I said, I'll just take it. So uh, it was a track experience day, which we got for free, which ended up being a nine and a half. Nine and a half. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. But and then what you should do is reverse a car into it. There's a video, I'll reverse my <laughs> yeah. car into it. And then you've got another build video. Yeah. Repairing the M3. Well, this That's is amazing. This what is going to be like, a uh, again, a different thing. Um, so obviously I try and cover loads of different things. This is going to be a full restoration, completely standard. So I'm going to go, all standard BMW parts um, and bring it back to standard how it should be like to the point where I'm taking off the rusty bolts to replace them with the other ones oh, because I think it's a, it's a different thing then and, and I'm getting excited for it because it's different but it's I'll be excited for that when it goes up for sale yeah yeah that's it that's it because <laughs> yeah, I'd love I'd they love, are, love yeah. the, the worst the thing I've been M3. going home and I've been looking at E46 M3 stuff on YouTube and I've seen people like doing mad stuff to them, and it's I'm like, oh my god! Probably got to put V10s in them. Yeah, I, yeah, I've seen people oh. turbo them, and like I watch Adam LZ in America and stuff, and he uses it for drifting. I'm like, oh my god, it would look so good modified. I've got to like sort of stop myself from yeah. doing it. Like, <laughs> yeah, again, the bit like you sort of said earlier on the business side. So you, Matt Armstrong, wants to modify and go drifting and put a turbo. Yeah, on yeah. It. But the business side of you says no. Let's do a complete restoration. Yeah, let's do something different. No yeah. one's doing that. That's it. And, that's and, and it. That is what interests me you do look at things you you came to us um early last year looking to do a liberty walk build yeah what made you do that was it because it was the maserati maserati was it because you saw in america and is it's it's more of a, a lifestyle in america the modifying scene yeah yeah you just seen it and thought, i want I a bit of that i just i love them anyway i love the look of liberty walk cars all that sort of crazy stuff and with youtube you know everything's times 10. You know, like, if you're modifying a car, if, you've, if you're making a video and you've put, like, I don't know, if you've sprayed your wheels black, you know it's not, you've just gone from silver to black. It's not gonna be that great of a video. If you're doing something out, out, out of the ordinary, it's wild, it creates a talking point, then you know it's gonna pull more people in, whether they like it or dislike it. And so it was a win-win for me. I always wanted to do it, and I looked at, well, 
coming to choose the Liberty Walk car, I wanted to do a Liberty Walk. I didn't know which one, and I just thought, well, what's the sort of cheapest option I can go for, which um, looks cool. And I looked at the Maserati, seeing that there was like barely any in the UK, well, none in the none UK. None in the UK. No. None in the UK no, at all. Fake. Yep. And uh, I like the look of the Maserati anyway. It's always a car that is one of those things that I think petrol heads look at and think, oh, I could afford that, but would I really want to have a Maserati with all the issues and everything that comes to it? And I always look at that, it was the same sort of, similar sort of thing with the Bentley. It's like, oh, the price have come down so much. Oh, I should, like, my heart wants to buy it. My brain tells me not to That's buy it. That's exactly it. it. And um, the Maserati was that. I got it. I looked for the cheapest one. I was sort of going, I was thinking, oh, should I do a crash damage one? But I started looking at parts and it was really difficult to find parts. Um, as we found finding bumpers for it and stuff. Mm. And I thought if I buy a crash damaged one, I'm going to be struggling to find parts for it before I even get to the Liberty Walk kit. So I thought, let's just buy the cheapest one on Auto Trader, which I found, which was actually local to me. Got that and then just went from there with it. And again, it is, uh, it's a hit and miss thing. I want to try it out and I think the way I see it with Liberty Walk stuff is the majority of people, well, I don't know, I'd say 60 to 70% of people that watched it probably didn't like it or they they would view it, they wouldn't have it themselves, but um, and the other lot really like it. But I'd say the people that really love it are the kids, you know, like the people mm -hmm. 16, 17, that sort of stuff. And the way I see it is I'm doing this stuff now when these kids, these 16, 15, 16 year olds or whatever, when they grow up and when they get their car, they're going to want a, to Liberty Walk it. And that's when my videos will then... Really start to fly. Really, because yeah, they'll yeah, be watching yeah. these videos yeah. then. And I think it's like the Max Power stuff, like years and years ago, no one really is into that sort of stuff now. But when kids see it and when the kids see that Supra and the Mustang and the Maserati, they love it, they've got the phones out. And they'll remember that as a kid and when they get their car that's what I they'll want to do and, it, and it's the evolution of it i always look what's going on look in, in, in america i would say america is maybe five ten years in front of us car scene wild like well, it's, some people would yeah, disagree yeah. but i would say that's what it is so if we sort of kind of replicate what's going on there i know or maybe the videos don't do as good now or maybe there's not as many people getting liberty walk kids now i think in the future it'll be going wild yeah. because people will watch it and they're aspiring to have that, although it's going electric. Can you imagine stuff, if you could, I know you can't get out of the country yet, but you could fly your Maserati. That's it. That was the Route, plan, uh, Route 66 and go and visit all the I'd other the states to meet up with uh, some US YouTubers with Liberty Walk cars. That's it. That's do, what I Because it's, it's a dream and it's a very good business. Yeah, that's Cause, it. Because yeah. you get to meet these people, network. The whole, then. like, I mean, I could, doing this YouTube stuff is is when I sit in bed and I just think, oh, what am I actually doing? Like, it's a <laughs> job, and I'm, it's absolutely mental. And I'm like so grateful that I can do it because I just can't. It, and well, I don't feel real. It feels like so one day it's just gonna be like right back to work. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it doesn't but feel it, right, but it's growing and growing. Oh, it's mad. The it's thing mad. that surprised me was you had a plan and said, right, I want to do a Liberty Walk build. The cost of the kit, suspension, wheels. Uh, obviously, you did a lot of the the fitting and the mechanicals because that's what your your yeah, videos yeah, about. Yeah. Um, but you had a plan to say I'm investing into my YouTube channel. Yeah. I've yeah. got to put the money up to do something but that's, that's a bit more special. No, do any business. You've got to invest in a premises. But not many people it, on that's YouTube your stock. do that. Well, this is it. The way I I see it and the way it's always worked for me. I never sort of well, it's no point like fixing what's not broken. So I've always put money into stuff and gone off there. And the way I've seen other YouTubers, like my advice for them to be is literally take risks, invest, every business has got to take risks. You've got your initial like um, fees and everything, like your building costs, this, that, and the other. And then you're spending money to make money. And that's yeah, yeah. like, yeah. as this YouTube stuff has become a business, I, I spend so much, I mean, like it's ridiculous the amount of money I actually spend, like buying cars, buying yeah. parts. And but if you know that that, like you sort of say, if you spend a thousand pound, you know it's going to make you five. You don't like it. Well, I've got it. so much respect for that because I feel in modern day influencers that have a channel, it is all about well, if I just get given something, put it on the car, say how good it is, that is my job done. I'm, whether I'm paid yeah. for it, whether I'm getting the subs from it, that's it. It's it's having the it's ha it's a balance because I really I really love cars and I'm really into them. And then it's also, I've got to have a business mind as well saying, is it worth it? But 
Example, the Lamborghini Gallardo. Mm. It's costing me, it was an 83 grand car, 83,000 pound car. It cost me 1,200 quid a month for that car because I've never had finance before in a car. You haven't seen it yet. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 1,200 quid a month that car's costing me. Potentially, if I made one video um, a month out of that, I'd get that 1,200 quid back. Um, at least, and that was my plan. I was like, I can drive my dream sort of car. I know it's not going to do as well on YouTube because it's not, I normally do the crash damage stuff and that sort of thing, but it's like a dream car that I wanted to have. Twin turbo in it, again, looked at what the Americans are doing to it, loved it, that sort of stuff. It's next to like 30 odd thousand pounds to twin turbo it. I'm never going to get that money back out of doing that thing. Sometimes you need your halo car. To yeah. draw the it's a, it's a yeah, talking yeah, yeah. like I watch um, in America Stradman he's uh, got a Bugatti Veyron and he was similar he's on a podcast and I was listening to him I was like why would he buy a million pound Bugatti Veyron he's never, he would never get his money back but he loves cars he's so into you've it you've got to still have his same passion and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's a talking point yeah. it's a, like what will happen is people come oh, have you seen that YouTuber who's bought a Bugatti Veyron oh I've not seen him have a look they have a look Oh, I like his stuff. They watch his other stuff, yeah, and then yeah. there's your investment. That's it. And like that Bugatti Veyron will never drop in value. They're going up. So yeah, like yeah. It, it, it is, it's a clever thing. Yeah. It wouldn't get a million pound back from the content on the car, but it's a talking point. And that's the same with the Gallardo for me. I, like I do it for the love of it, and I want to do it. The content is just an extra thing for yeah. that car. But I get to drive and enjoy a car that I want, I've want. i always wanted to have. I think that's what comes across in your videos, that raw passion, yeah, that, that raw that, interest. Like people ask me, like, why are you so shouty and why are you so excited all the time? I'm because I'm excited. Fucking, I love what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I, like, it's amazing. Because like, it, it, when you buy a car, so I, I'm thinking, like, if you were to say, I'm buying the GTA 6, in your head, do you have like a plan of like, okay, I'm going to do 10 videos, and then in 10 videos time, the car is almost paid for itself, if that makes sense. Oh no, GTA 6 is a cheaper um, car. Do you like storyboard it at all? Do you just wing it and go, hey, this needs I just really, I really wing it. (laughs) I really do wing it. I know, like, so the M4, um, really the longer, but this, the way I look at it, I I get the M4, I get a car that I really like. I'm like, right, I really like that car. And I sort of, because I feel like that's the main thing I think with YouTube is being yourself in front of camera. If you be yourself, you attract people who have got the similar sort of like, um, dreams to you and the same sense of humour as you so more than likely whatever you like they'll like so I, I find cars like that that I would like and uh, the M4 was one and I thought I'm going to find the most smashed up one that I can find and then I'm going to get loads of content out of it because mm. it's so smashed up so I found that one and then it always comes down to the first video that I film in it I film the first video and then I know if that video's shot up it's got a lot of views then I'm like okay this is what I decide now. How, you, far, how far do I go, I go with okay, the car? So, um, example, the 140, I know people love that car. Mm. And um, I now have decided, okay, I don't, I don't have to stop the build early. I can just go create, I can do turbos on it. I can yeah. do this, that on it. Really string it out as a I can really yeah. go for it yeah. and go absolute all out with it because I know people are really invested in, in that car. Same with the Golf R. The M4 was, again, uh, it does really well, but I had an Audi R8, and that R8 just struggled. It was just struggling for views, and I had it four months, and, and then I got, got rid of it because I, it was just struggling. And although I love the car, and it was my dream car to sort of own one of them. A bit sort of underwhelming when I got it. On it like it, it's not that quick. No, and, compared like, to a yeah, Golf R. <laughs> that's it. It's, it. it's not that quick, but again, uh, but saying that although it's got less views there was only people that watch my channel because of that r8 yeah. they came in like they love r8s they watch it because it's an r8 it's same with the gta6 that doesn't get as much views as the other videos but people have came over you're getting from, a different audience yeah they've watched it and they and they're like oh i'm so glad i found this channel i love it and then they're more likely to watch the other videos and it's the same with the maserati stuff you can look back and that doesn't get as good views as the 140 stuff but there's people who's walked up to a unit saying, yo, oh, you're the lad with the Maserati. Yeah. And they don't know that I've got any other cars. No, they only watch the Maserati one. one. Yeah. So it's having that mixture. It's good. You look on Top Gear, they film on high-end cars, they film on cheap cars, they do... Yeah. It, but then you must always have something to film because the amount of cars you've got, there's always, always something, something you can do. That's, so you yeah. can never be stuck with something. You, again, you get that, you can't please everyone and you get stick a lot saying like, oh, I used to like the channel when you only had one car. Um, but when I only had one car is when I was doing a full-time job. So 
what people don't see sort of behind the scenes, which is why we set up Hannah's channel, um, so they actually see what what work goes into it. So, example, her RS5 that we bought, bought the RS5, get it in the ramp, look over everything that's broke, and then it's going to take you a week or two weeks to get all the parts to fix it. That's your next video. So, what you are you going to wait three weeks? Yeah, what are you going to do yeah, in those three yeah, weeks' exactly time? Right. So that's why I have another another car film video on that car keeps keeps, keeps the content and that's the only way you can do it with this youtube stuff and you've got to really or invest into it waiting for someone manufacturer to say hey there's an audi diesel can you go do a review on it yeah that's not me <laughs> <laughs> i don't blame you yeah i don't like, blame you again that's another thing unless they said um, it's california and it's mclaren then it's uh, definitely it's that's a th like yeah some people did ask me at the start are oh, you going to do like car reviews and stuff but i i film what i watch so i watch people when I think a good video um, makes you feel something or learn something. So if you're watching yeah. a video and it makes you feel happy, it makes you smile, it makes you enjoy yourself, you feel good. At, you feel good at the end of the video. Yeah. yeah, you've got that escapism, or you've learned something. So someone watches someone changing airbags on a dash or something. You're like, I didn't know it was done that way, and yeah. you're like, oh, you remember that, or, and you've that's a good video. And when I watch car reviews and stuff, I just no. <laughs> gone sleep. But no. I, 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 how much have you been paid to say it's good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. it. So uh, I, it's, yeah. I, that's what I try and be, I try and get my excitement, what I'm feeling to other people at this, like through my content as well, which I think is a massive thing. And if I'm feeling sad, they've got to feel the same feel way. Sad too. Yeah. So it's because gonna, it's not all wins. Because you have had a uh, uh, a knock. Should we say what was it? A C63. Yeah. Okay, Which I thought was, was great, you showed that on camera. Yeah, so that was another thing. So, yeah. Because that's the risk you buy. Buying crash damage cars, yeah, it comes wins and losses. And uh, that C63 just got brave, seen it, looked like it had been in just a little front end accident. Bought it without going to look at it, locked down and stuff. And I thought, you know what, go for it. <laughs> Calculated risk and that sort of thing. Got there, the guy dropped it off and went and um, it looked fine. And then got it in the ramp and all this chassis were bent and twisted. And yeah. so this is the point where I was thinking, right, it, do you know what I, I always think as well? You know, if you're angry or you've got like really high emotion at the time, before you do anything, you've got to sort of stop. Like, because you, whatever you do at that point is, you look back at it and think, oh, I regret doing that. I think you've got to sit back. And, so I had a little sit back and think, am I going to film this or am I not? And I sort of had to weigh up like, right, should I film it? Should I not? Should I get rid of it? Try and flip it on again? And it, I just decided, well, I think it's good to film this because it's part of the journey. So yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And that bit yeah. to me stands out more than, I can't remember what else you're building at the minute, but, but yeah, you're, I remember that one because... That's it, because it's... It's, it's not all It's right. honestly it's fail. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's real life and that, and that can happen sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, like, business side of me pro thought, right, just whack it back in auction and uh, don't say anything. Get, try and get my money back out of it and then the side of me thinks you know what i want people to see it mm. i thought let's film it so i filmed it and i was devastated and then i thought this would be a really good thing to try and rebuild because it, it's different it's let's just try it it's not going to be worth it money wise but it may get people to awesome. watch it and stuff and um yeah it People were, um, the first video went up and it went mad. Everyone loved it and was like, felt sort of pity on me yeah. sort of thing. And I thought, well, let's go for it. Let's rebuild it. Yeah. And I ended up taking it to a body shop and like a really reputable like one as well with frame jigs and everything like that. And they said, if it was a Volkswagen Polo, one litre would do it. But C63, 200 mile an hour car Twisted or so. Chassis. Yeah, they said yeah. it's never going to be right because we could fix it, but it's never going to be right. And I was like, because I'm doing it on YouTube, it it can't I can't so what I've happens to it. the car afterwards. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So it but that though that videos on that C sixty three, although only only made three, they did really well and everyone loved it and now and they want me to get another one. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well maybe because it did well because it they The story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, that's, that's exactly. it. It's the story so behind it. Everything every of one of these decisions has to be, like you said, business and heart. But as a business on YouTube, obviously, we notice there's quite a few more corporate uh, advertising now, yeah, which yeah. you've got some really interesting ones. The one that I'm sorry, I had to you say. Bring you bring comedy to... into it. <laughs> the Manscaped one, I was watching it, <laughs> and then I was sat there with my hand half, and she just flicked up and looked, and it's a bit when you're in the shower, and you go, oh, I've accidentally slipped. <laughs> And yeah, the it. sausage just goes the sausage. He falls and he blurs it out. He's like, what are you watching? I'm like, I don't know. Come on, just cut his knob off. <laughs> yeah. So, 
But that's they, they don't they don't ask what, that's what, what you're doing. You just go, hey, so, I'm going to manscape. Well, on. this is the thing. That is most sponsored ads, that, like the way it works is they buy 60 seconds of your video. That's the way I see it. They're yeah. buying a section of your video before halfway in the video where most people are watching um, with the call to action, which will be a link in the description with a discount code. Most people have a script. Um, they have a script. They say, read it in your own voice. Do Other than that, do what you want. Manscaped, just go, there's the products. Do what you want. And I'm, and I'm like, brilliant. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so then I can... Like you can see all in your analytics on YouTube where people drop yeah. off, where people do it. And normally when you do a sponsored ad, everyone skip, 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 skip. I understand that. So, but also I see that the spot without the sponsors, I would never be able to afford anything of what I do. I won't be able to pay my wage or anything without a sponsor. That's my, that's my bread and that's butter. That's your income. So I see they're paying my wage almost like my boss would pay my wage if I was working a job. It's only right for me to put effort in. So when I see people sit in there in the living room saying this video is sponsored by blah, 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 blah. and I'm is. like oh come on like they, they're paying thousands of pounds for this please put some effort in so I really try and keep people watching whether they like the product or not at least if you can make it entertaining well it's just remember the most it. memorable part well, of your videos the, was the advert yeah, yeah the exactly. advert yeah, yeah, so yeah that's it that but then also you've got a shark outfit as well yes <laughs> did you buy that or did they give it to you I bought that because <laughs> that's really I've good I've got three I've got, really? three I've got one for the dog as well I mean <laughs> but is it surf shark you know the yeah. I don't know what they do yeah surf shark yeah that's it so I, again I saw other people filming YouTube stuff and that and I, th I think a lot of people I think mainly in the UK just do this YouTube stuff on the side It's like they have the full-time job. They've got the main hustle and then this the the YouTube is the little side thing If they make money for it, they make money for it. Whereas for me, I've sort of found What I want to do the, like YouTube is like my, my passion I think I'm on it constantly looking at analytics looking at this that and the other whereas a lot of other guys wouldn't so I put more effort into it and I think that's sort of representing the growth of it um, because I want it that bad and that side of things was where I saw well that other people aren't doing that they're not putting effort into the adverts they're not so let's try and do something make it my own and see what they're but saying. But you do well with it like you sort of said that, and it, yeah. when you are because I think most people now they're in, in the scene and we have a lot of customers come through our doors and all they watch is YouTube. They'll go home and they'll put it on a five mm. o'clock and they'll just find video after video, set a playlist and it'll be everyone from the UK to um, guys in America. Yeah. And they'll yeah. watch five or six videos a night and they'll have their hour and then whatever. But most people, like you sort of say, will switch off through the adverts. But when you watch yours, like I sort of say, Mother I've walked in and she's why is that guy dressed as a shark? <laughs> not watching it. Not know, quite sure. Not uh, watching the village idiot it. run round in yeah. a shark. There's so many things and But they must love that. Oh yeah. They must. Like, and do, they, do you have meetings like that? Do they come to and go, We're they, loving what you're doing? And here. I think that's why I have so many brand deals. I don't know whether I'm too cheap or, or they I have or it's just because I do well at them because I every single one of my videos is sponsored. And is it every video? Every single video. I've got contracts for like coming out my ears of sponsorships. That's but brilliant. It's security for me. Like yeah, that's what, definitely. people can be annoyed at it as much as they want, but all it takes is five seconds to skip past it the way I see it. It's yeah. like if you moan at it's that, free. like yeah, you're watching for free, and it, it takes five seconds to skip past. If you're watching TV, you can't skip past the adverts on that. So like, what makes it any different? So, we waving. <laughs> <laughs> I've always heard it's a stop, but, no, but yeah, that, so that's why I, I sort of go for it. And what you have to do as well, you have to send your videos for approval before they go live. So um, they want to see it. Make sure you're not saying anything stupid or reused the wrong logos or said the wrong discount code. And they always come back saying absolutely hilarious. They love it. And uh, I've had jobs off that. Um, like I sort of joke to Hannah saying, oh, I've got to be the next Go Compare man and stuff. And <laughs> like I've had jobs where I've just done adverts for companies now um, where like and a recent one is like a trading company like eToro. Um, and they message me saying, oh, they want to do a an advert, not on my channel. They want me to be the presenter on their channel. But no they also want me to come up with a concept, the script and everything. I thought, brilliant, let's do it. So did that. And that was really good money because... I was like, well, they're using my brand to sell their product, so oh, I charge what a, what a fancy sort of thing, and yeah. it was it was really it was really good. And, and that's when you like, chose to buy another car. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, and that's free. Well, that's yeah, that's another thing. It was uh, I always sort of say is I just um, 
Most of the money I make just literally go back in the channel. As long as I can pay my wage. Anything I'm you wouldn't happy. do. A any sort of like. In, in, a minute. In, no, I'm saying <laughs> okay. no. Just like if a company came to you that you really didn't like, or you didn't like the ethics of what it is, or, or do you, do you, you know, I just wonder if there's a brand that comes to you. Is there anything you wouldn't like to be seen in your videos? You know, whether it's FX trading as an example or something. Yeah. Then, no, I don't. Yeah. Want to so there is there is a limit to like how. So uh, there is a limit to like things that you ca you do and don't want to put on. I mean, like, I mean, I've done a one advert before for like a gaming thing. Like you see in America, you know, like, it's Raid Shadow Legends yeah. and yes, that sort yes, of stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and like, I, was, I, was, I was fine with it. I was like, it's a bit weird. Like people can skip through it, whatever. But I did it and I saw the brief of what you meant to say. It was a massive script and they wanted it in like, a minute long and I was like oh, oh, there's no way I could fit all that in and it like that sort of stuff I did one video from and in the end I called it quits with it yeah. and um, but I don't know this I've had weird companies which I thought oh it's going to be uncomfortable for me to say to do that sort of stuff like again like what was another one like hair thing called keeps uh, what was it? and it was like if you lose your hair, you meant to put it on for do your hair. I was like, oh, I don't really know so how to integrate one, it. Yeah, 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 like I don't really know. How does that work? But you can't make it funny. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's yeah. really difficult. Some some things are just I don't know. There is a limit to what you can. To what, what you can. Uh, yeah, what, and whether they fit into you. Yeah. Manscape is target audience. Yeah, like Manscape fit in, and this is the thing at the time. I like I was going back to it. I didn't know what you charge for these things. Um, when it I was working full time, and I think it was beginning when i got the s5 i started getting sponsor deals and people were e it was agencies emailing me at the start but i was having some brands come direct to me and say okay we want to sponsor a video could you plug this can you plug that i was like oh, just give us 50 quid give us yeah. like give us 20 quid for it i'll do it i didn't realize the value of it and the more i think about it it is actually so valuable when you think if a hundred thousand people have seen your product and that advert is on youtube for a lifetime yeah. then that's a hundred thousand people plus the adverts on there for so long yeah. like you, you you don't realize the value of it you don't realize the price and i'm charging 10 20 50 quid and then an, i remember a agency this is back like january time they said oh how much for an advert? How much for a sponsored ad on um, one of your videos? And I was like, well, let's push it, 200 quid. And he goes, no, you need to be charging like 2,000 pounds. And I was like, what? Really? really? <laughs> and they said, yeah, that's what you're charging. And that's what made me realize, God, this actually could be a job. Yeah, like, it could be a if job. If that's what people are charging, yeah. and I was at like 50,000 subscribers or something like that, I'm thinking, what are the people charging around a million? Yeah. And you're getting a million views. And you're views putting out four video. videos a week. Yeah, and I'm so like, on. I was like, well, there's the, it could be a job then. That, that That's how I see it. And that's how I sort of worked into it. And I didn't know any other YouTube, no. so I didn't know how to Ask, what to speak say. to them. Yeah, by the way, I this video is sponsored by <laughs> yeah. absolutely nobody. No, <laughs> Monster. Oh, well, Mon Monster, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. And that's, that's how I realised it, it becomes a job and it becomes a business and you get more business minded with it. Um, yeah. And that, that's when it just, yeah, went into lockdown, uh, got furloughed and that time I was doing like sponsored ads, maybe like £2,000 a video, something like that. And then you got your ad revenue on top you get from the videos. Yeah. And then it would just, I remember just being able to do one video thing, oh, I'm going to get £2,000 for this. And I was like, that's what I get paid in a month from like working full time. And I was like, what this is so weird like i can film a video which takes me like a couple of hours on my drive i love it and i'll get paid what i do for a month and that made me weigh up can i do this as a job i got called back into work and um yeah i was just sitting at work thinking you know what i'm just going to keep youtube on side because it's not sustainable when it's locked down everyone's at home that's why people are watching not when they go back to work they won't watch anymore so that but all i kept thinking when i was sitting at my desk like at work was what's the next video I'm going to film? I was getting emails on my phone of like sponsor deals coming to me and I'm just thinking like, oh, what can I charge them? And I was two getting, grand, two grand, two grand, yeah, two grand, and then I was grand. getting comments coming in. I was replying to everyone's comment. My mind was not at work and yeah. that's what made me sort of realize like it's not that I didn't like working there. It was just mine wasn't there and I thought it's better for me to leave because I'm not giving a hundred percent of work and I think that's unfair to the boss there yeah, like, is a that's, good boss. That's really honourable. And, really like, it, it, and I, I explained that to him. I said, like, I love working here. It's a great job. I was working four days a week and I just it, think, I just yeah. want to say, if YouTube doesn't work, I'll give you a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so it's a big decision leaving the job. Yeah. Going so full time. Explain it to my boss. He was really sound about it. And the way, again, you have the decision in your mind. Because it's it was, scary, isn't it? What, like the, one of the most scariest things I've ever done. And I get so many messages of people on Instagram saying, I want to follow my dreams and do what you do and this, that and the other. Do I just quit my job? And it's different for every person. I mean, people know that I bought houses and stuff as well. So like, that's another thing that I have to f sort of fall back on. So it's, there's a lot of thing that goes on which people don't see and think, oh, they can just go into work the next day and quit the job. Like, but because yeah, I'd have to say the automotive like YouTube side must be the hardest one to grow. Yeah. Because there's yeah. a lot of, you get the original ones, the original five or 10, whoever they are, your Shmees and your JWWs. Yeah. And then you get uh, probably like you newer guys like yourself and Jamie officially gassed and yeah. that sort of yeah. stuff. And you seem to grow, but we get through work a lot of YouTubers coming in, and they're like four or five thousand. Like, how do I grow? I'm like, I don't know. You yeah. just got to go and take it. You got to go and buy the world's ugliest car. You've got to. You've got to do something. You've different. got to invest into it, and you've got to be yourself. Like people always say, like some people say, oh, you copy some people's content and this that and the other. But I don't think you can copy anyone's content if you're doing it yourself. So people do, I don't know, like these viral videos where it's like. Spending 24 hours in my car. You could do, I could do it. Yours would be hours. different to mine. Mine would be different, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah because yeah. it's your own, it's yourself. You cannot copy someone else. Yes, Obviously. you can copy the aspect, yeah. It's like, not a great video. You can copy <laughs> the aspect, but you, it will always be your own because of yourself. Yeah. There's only so many things you can do. People have yeah. got to stop trying to be other people. So people think, oh, let's sit inside a car, let me review it. This is a really lovely place to be, and it's like this. Uh, just say what you want to say. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of people, when they're given a brand new, I don't know, RS5 to review. Yeah. They almost feel obliged to be nice that's, that's because it. Yeah, Audi have yeah. sent me on this lovely pest tour and I've had a nice night and I'm not having a dig at YouTube I'm really not. Yeah. But you know, that content becomes a little stale. Yeah, because mm. because you feel the pressure of, of that. And it's a great car because I had a really nice night. A, a, for, a good example. Do you get invited um, on them by the way? What, with like the, an Audi press trip or a BMW no, press trip? I, on I doubt I'd ever would. <laughs> <laughs> Have to take it apart in a night. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I, I had a, um, what was, like, exam, okay, so Scorpion exhaust I put on a, flipping out, what car was it? Golf R. Yes. Golf R, that was it. So I was looking for an exhaust for it. And I thought, what's you didn't the, come to Remus. No, this I'm is the joking. thing. This is the thing as well. I hate. I know other YouTubers do it, but I hate asking companies for deals and stuff like that. So I'm really? really other YouTubers like, absolutely love it. I know. It. I know. That's what. I, <laughs> I know people are like. Oh, you should do it for me. For Look at me. I that's know. it. So I never. I never ask for for deals or anything like that. So I'm out there. What's the cheapest exhaust? And I think that's realistic as well. People, people are going to do you know that. when they've got a car for they're not yeah. looking. This is the most expensive exhaust. Right, bar, let's buy it. Like, like, and I think like. people sort of tend to jump to. That I think, oh, YouTube has got loads of money and this, that, and the other. But I, so I don't, I'll, I'll just look at what's the cheapest, what can I get? And the Scorpion exhaust was the cheapest one that I could get. And um, yeah, so end up buying one of them. And like, I think people think, oh, you got brand deals and this, that, and the other. But it's not, I bought it. And I was like, I'll just be genuinely honest with it. And um, I got like non res and it was droney as anything. And I went out and I was like, oh my God. And we filmed it in the video and like the exhaust tips were too small. I was trying to put my fist in them saying, oh, it's a, Fist test, it didn't work, it didn't go in. I was like, There's no vowel on it. Wasn't yeah, it? there was yeah. nothing. But Scorpion watched that video, they loved it, and they said, let us send, let me send you out a valve a one, proper, a yeah, like yeah. a resonating thing, yeah. because they loved it. And whether it's good exposure or bad exposure, they got exposure, That's it. and it worked so well. And then since then, they've been happy to help with the other builds, and I thought, that, I think that's a much more respectful way of me doing it. Like, I bought off them, I've invested into it, I said whether I liked it or not. If I don't like it, I was honest. Yeah. But they've seen that and they're like, right, let me, let's me let rectify it. And then they've sent me out this. I did another video, they gave me carbon tips, which was bigger, valves on it, resonated, filmed the video like that. And I said, genuinely, this is much better. And people must say they're great that. guys. Is it Sean you dealt with that? I, I can't Sean remember. Sean and Ivan, isn't Yeah, it's a great, great But guys. they were absolutely mint and I would, like respect them for that because they didn't have to do a deal and like most of well I know like automotive industry is not like massive amounts of huge amounts of money like example like if you said right I'll give you a Golf R intake or whatever there's you're already limited on how many you can sell because of how many people have Golf R's so yeah, 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 yeah. it's it's not like a Squarespace or a surf shop where it oh, appeals to everyone you are a hundred percent right and do you know when you do give product to 
to YouTubers, I think you've got to look at how many physically get sold off the back of that, yeah. that video. What's the margin on it? I would have to sell 13 exhaust systems to cover that well, cost. That's it. And it's not going to happen. It's all about the biggest, bigger thing but of But yeah, branding. again, going as the business yeah. is all we ask for is we're happy to do this, we're happy to book you and happy to stop everything else we're doing for the day, but just please plug us, tag us, because that makes yeah, such a yeah. difference. Yeah, that's that it. Does. That's it. Really it. Does. It's the brand exposure and everything like that, but I, with the car stuff, I never really expect like massive, di like if someone's giving me something for free, I'm thinking, oh my God, that is, that's amazing. that is unreal. Like, but yeah, the, the, the money for me, I see is from you, your Squarespace, your Surfshark, your this, because they can sell loads of it. It appeals to everyone. Everyone needs a website. Everyone yeah. needs a VPN. Everyone like can everyone needs shave the balls. balls. Yeah, yeah like, smooth balls. It appeals yeah. to everyone, but if you're trying to sell, um, if you're trying to sell, yeah, like Golf R bit, you can only sell them to people with a Golf R, and then you think how many people actually want that part on their Golf R as well. So you, you it's audience limited. is going smaller, smaller, smaller. So it is difficult. It is difficult. Like if it you're is, giving, it them, is really difficult. That, when you said when you say you got a hundred thousand views on a video, that's not a hundred thousand Golf R owners. No, that, <laughs> that's the thing. It was. I did it on a video. I said, oh, comment down below what car you have, and because I was really interested to see whether people were watching it because they had yeah. that car. People are like got Ford Transit, go around in, in like a Renault traffic as my car, you know? Yeah. No, they're just into cars, they didn't have that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think if I was doing a video on the Golf R intake and there's only like 200 people watching that who've actually got a Golf R and then, and 10 then only that. 10 of them want one and then only five of them could afford it. If you give a 500 pound Golf R intake to me, you, when are you going to get that money yeah. back? Like, I, but I think that's your your openness, your honesty, and, and obviously it's worked with Scorpion as well. People can see that and go, do you know what? I'm, I'm willing to support that yeah, person yeah. Because, like, because he hasn't come in demanding and, and I think you're more likely to be supported by a lot of manufacturers. I, I think it, it works well both yeah. in both hands. It's give and take. The it, subscribers can yeah. see it as well. I'll be genuine, like this is yeah. what I've got, is it rubbish, is it not? And that and it's it's genuine. It's not like oh these are giving me give it me for free. So this is the most brilliant it's product ever. Like yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. pressure on me, there's no pressure that's another thing as well is I feel a bit if someone's given me a deal or something for free, I feel a bit worried that like, oh my God, are they gonna get enough stuff out of it? Like we've done the lads at Alloy Fix in Romford, they always repair my wheels for me and um, they do a good job and everything like that. And I feel I feel so bad for them because they never normally repair a wheel in one day because it's so much work, you know, acid dipping them, sandblasting them, powder coating, lacquer, they do it all in one day because I have to drive all the way down there for them and they don't take anyone else's work on when I'm there and I'm thinking, I please hope someone goes Spies. there and does. They do a really good job, and they said they've had loads of people come down. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad. No, I'm so out. glad. Yeah, that's yeah. that's but, brilliant. But then that's, I, I almost don't like the pressure of it, and I feel bad for asking them. And like sometimes I feel like, you know what? I'd rather just go and pay someone because I'm a bit nervous that they won't get the thing. But I, some people, I don't know. Some people, I think, gets to the end and they think, you know what? I should have. I deserve this for free. Like, uh, and uh, I think I don't so. know, this is the wrong. Yeah, conversations I need to have off camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. no, that's interesting. Because the other thing that we need to touch on as well is, uh, I want to know what your thoughts are going forward. But first of all, we need to talk about your clothing line. Yeah. So. Because <laughs> yeah, you yeah. done really well, and then I spoke to you not long ago, and you said you went to DMO at Silverstone. And yeah. You sold out. Yeah. Yeah. It went absolutely. Clothing, again, was a thing that I looked at my audience. Because yeah, it's a big thing in America, isn't it? Again, yeah, yeah massive yeah. thing in America. My audience, main audience is 25, age 25 to 35. And then it's like the lads aged 18 to 23 and then older. And I thought, are people really going to buy like a YouTuber's merch sort of thing? And I was like, I, I, I couldn't see it really. People buying it off like a guy who builds cars and... I was like, mm, I, I don't really fancy it. I thought it was more like a kid's thing, you know, like, oh yeah, you go out and buy kids merch sort of thing. So I never really got around to doing it. And that's, and before the merch, I did toolboxes. Like I started, I, I bought, um, look, finding everywhere to try and find some toolboxes um, that I could just sell for people to start up. And my idea was like, right. instead of selling merch, I would sell um, toolkits to encourage people to yeah. get out on the it's tools. And that's I thought it was really relevant. And we did that and, it really, it, they went mad. When we first did it, it was loads sold out, but the only problem we had with it, it was that 
was I only was living in a two bedroom semi semi detached. I had barely any room, and we ordered so many toolboxes, and they were big boxes, and they were just stacking up. <laughs> and then like you posting them, we're going down to the post office. Like Hannah was packing them all. We filled up the boot of the car, we're going down to the post office to post them all. And the post office was like, "What on earth? It, like, what are you what doing? Are you we didn't sell." What I do, I plug it in a video and would sell like probably like 25 to 30 after that video, and then we wouldn't sell it with like the trickle out. So it wasn't enough for a post people to come and collect it, yeah. but it was like Too it was much enough for local yeah. post office. So that's why we like we stopped doing it now, but that was the original thing, and I, and I liked doing that. I was like, oh, this is brilliant, and people is they're using it, they're taking photos of it, and um, tagging me on Instagram, and it's exposure everywhere. I'm helping someone, they've got a, a product that they'd use for a long time and because the way I explained it was that my dad bought me my first socket set for Christmas and I've still got that socket set now oh, and amazing. the amount of cars I've worked on that socket set with is so good and I thought if I can get the same thing yeah. with that socket set then it, That's it, it's brilliant. So I like that idea. I did, I did that and it worked really well and uh, we've only just recently stopped doing it but we're probably going to look at doing it again now we've got the space but um, that was the idea, and we never just thought about clothing. We didn't, we didn't think about clothing. And uh, the one thing that made me think about clothing was, again, the business side of things. During COVID, Tavares in America builds a lot of um, cars, big American guy. Like, 675 is rebuilding, isn't he? Yeah, 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 does all these crazy builds and stuff. He said um, in like, one of his videos, right, over the next three months, I'm donating all clothing sales to like this charity or something like that. And um, he's only got like three t-shirts on his shop or something. And none of them are like amazing designs or anything like that, um, nice t-shirts and that. And he um, did it all and then at the end of the three months he posted like a, a picture of his t-shirt sales. He'd done like 50 odd thousand pounds in t-shirt sales. And I was like, so if people are buying t-shirts off him, maybe yeah, I'm right. missing out. And I was getting asked for it, like when are you gonna do merch and this, that and the other. I thought perhaps we're missing out. You've got some brilliant out. designs. The Gapuchino Do you do that one. yourself? The yeah, design. again, I do it every day. You've got Gap a creative Gap yeah, 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 I loved. Yeah. So and, and hard work. Hard work beats talent. Yeah, and that's, so hard that's work a, beats talent. That's the thing yeah. with the merch. I thought, right, it's older people, so they ain't going to want to walk around with a big T-shirt saying Matt Armstrong on it. Like, it, they just, I just don't, I wouldn't do it, so I don't think other people would do it. So let's do it more relevant to the cars. And then also, we can sort of promote it as a way like, right, this T-shirt is based for this build. If you want to support this build, you buy the T-shirt. And that's what really helps. These extra things can help me go a little bit more wild on the yeah. cars and stuff. And at first, we did like the Bent, we did a Bentley T-shirt dedicated to the Bentley build. And uh, I had in my mind exactly what it wanted to be like, but I couldn't quite get the design right. And uh, Hannah's sisters were really good at like drawing and designing and stuff. So I worked with her. And she made all the design and everything, and then it went from there. And what we did to start with, because I was a bit nervous again about buying loads of stock in, we um, had it drop shipped, so people were buying it, and then it was going straight from a factory to the people, um, going like that, and we'd probably make about three pound on a t-shirt. And then, but so many people were buying it, it was like we've got to stock them. So stock em. that's when it just one thing led to another thing, another thing like. So you've yeah, got flight just, tags. Yeah, we've they go really got well. Those flight tags. tags. Yeah. Quite a few different designs of t-shirts. Some hoodies. Got like air fresheners, hoodies. And you've got your um, dog, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, dog, the dog Kevin, air freshener. Yeah, <laughs> dog <laughs> air freshener. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin air fresheners. Yeah. That's something else. I've just got to add. Again, when you say when you watch, you want to feel something. When you're watching YouTube videos, I think everyone felt something when. Um, you went to that guy's house. Oh, and yeah. And donated the money. Yeah, yeah. That, from the uh, raffle, his, yeah. His poor dog was only a puppy. and had a very expensive medical bill. Yeah, He commented yeah. something, and you just turned up at his house. Uh, yeah. With an envelope yeah. of cash. And like I said, you're not that's rolling it. in money. No, you no, know, you're no. Not, you're I have to say, it. without sounding cold-hearted, that's a very good business decision as well. <laughs> that's not that is cold-hearted. Yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm there almost in tears. Yeah, but you could have paid his money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't well, got McLaren, you have. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing. It was, it. This is what I want. I'm going to start doing more of because like, I had to sit down uh, again with like Hannah before saying like, w where we're at at the minute. I've got a house. I don't need any bigger house. I'm fine. I'm happy with the house. I've got a job. I love my job. Got all the cars that Six want to do and stuff like yeah. that. What can I? What can I do? Like, why am I, what are we? What am I doing it for? Like, because you come to the point where you're thinking, 
Like, you know, that there's all these rich people that just want to get richer. You, yeah. You're rich, 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 everyone. Rich, but what, why? Like, I don't How know, did that make you like, feel that day? Yeah, you it must have felt so, You must have felt on cloud nine. So, in coming back to thinking of all these things, so how can I leave my, like, impression on the world, but, like, 30, 40 years down the line, and I thought, if I think back to all these cars that have raffled off, some people will like it, some people don't like it, it's whatever. Great idea. But I think it's brilliant. So not only people get to watch these cars go from scrappy to looking absolutely mental and one of a kind, they also will get the chance to like enter into a raffle and probably win and drive away in a car that they never would have owned. Or, and it can change their life. So, Example, what? Well, okay, so first one was the S5. That was a cheap car anyway, but again, it's gave the guy, I think he sold it for around like £8,000. £8,000 on a £15 ticket. Absolutely mint. Not life changing, but it's given him a boost, and anyone would take it. If it's yeah. eight, eight and a half grand on the floor, you'd pick it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, massive. Bentley, gave away the Bentley. Young lad, again, he's always wanted one, and um, it still drives around it today, and he absolutely loves it to bits. But now, since the channel's grown and grown and grown, now the cars are becoming life-changing for people. So it then got to the Golf R, and the, the R8 got raffled again. I think he's actually selling that now. And people say, oh, he's selling it. Why not? It is. Like, yeah. It's his to do what he wants. Why, it's life-changing money again. Um, but when it got to the Golf R, it, it's been so good. I mean, the guy who won it was in Birmingham, a um, lad called Matt. Dropped it off to him. It was his dream car again. Loved the car, and he kept it for a bit. Kept getting photos. People was, like taking it, like photos of it, he'd driving around, and like he's messaging me saying it's so quick. Loves it. But then recently, he messaged me saying, um, "Oh, I, I hope you don't mind, but I'm selling the Golf R." And I was like, "That's fine. That's cool." Like he goes, "Oh, could you send me a receipt for it? Because just so I just need a receipt. I think a dealership was selling it for him or something." And I was like, yeah, it's fine, Give him a receipt, got him a receipt over for him. And um, he says, oh, it's not that I don't want it. He says, what's happened? I think over during December, his brother-in-law's got really ill and needs like a like really bad operation. Um, don't exactly know what he had, but he needs a desperate operation. But there's a massive long waiting list on the NHS. So he was selling the Golf R to pay for private health care for him so he can get to the front of the queue for an operation. And I think that potentially could save his life from me on YouTube. Oh, making a, oh, making I see. a, a video. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so he now, so if his brother, if his brother pulls through and he's like absolutely mint, like it comes 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, and he's telling the story like, oh yeah, my brother-in-law paid for my um, operation. operation. And, then, and people say, how did he pay for that? Well, he won this skull far off a YouTuber, yeah. Matt Armstrong. And yeah. there's my impression left yeah. on the world because of that. And then, the Ford Mustang, yes. young lad, won that, 21 years old, yep. cost him like £17,000 to insure it for the year, can't get insured on it. He's then sold that, which is going to be a deposit for his first his house. house. Yeah, yeah. It's already so you just 60, 70 years old down the line. I remember buying my first house. I won a car off Matt Armstrong. And there's yeah, my impression. Exactly Again, I've left that. the. Like, not only am I making videos for people, I'm also one by one leaving Changing a print people. on everyone's life. And then 1500 quid. That's a, a brand deal on a video, and that's how much that um, that dog needed that operation for, which we gave the money to. And again, with these raffle competition, Will raffles the car off, yeah. and he charges me a fee to raffle the car off. And one of those fee built in, I think he did an extra three thousand pounds for uh, advertising in case the tickets didn't sell. Tickets sold out instantly, so he says, right, we'll split the advertising cost. So 1,500 quid went to him, 1,500 quid to me, and that was 1,500 quid that in my mind I didn't have. Yeah. Randomly, and I feel like it's, I feel like everything happens for a reason, this chap messaged me saying, look, I hate asking for things or whatever, but could you share this? We're trying to do a GoFundMe page because his dog's got really ill, and as soon as I see a dog, I'm like, oh, no. Because that's all he was asking for, was to he, share He wanted me to page. share it, and, oh, I, and okay. I think if I shared it, he would have got it. Yeah, but yeah. I felt wrong asking my followers for more money because they've also they've entered in a raffle for a car as well. And like I think I can't ask it for any more money of people. And I've got their money. Like they've entered, I've got their money. This is meant to be invested into the channel. Why not help someone out who's watched the channel? And I was looking at it, and again, it was a 50-50 thing at the time because in my brain I was thinking, oh, if I give this guy some money, I'm not going to get millions of people millions messaging of people. me. I need this. I need that. So. 
but it just played on my mind. I thought, if his dog dies, and I knew that you I could, could have helped. done something with money that I didn't realise I was going to have, then I'm I couldn't Is live the dog it. That's down. amazing. Like, yeah, yeah, so yeah, dog rock, yeah, dogs dog's right. pulled, through. pulled through. And yeah. I thought, you know what, fuck yeah. it. And, and it was at the time where we weren't meant to drive anywhere. And I thought, no, I'm going to drive to his house and give, like, I want to see his reaction. I want to see what he's like. Went down there and uh, gave him the cash. And I don't think he, he knew what was going on at the time. He had no <laughs> idea. And then his missus, like, messaged me afterwards, like, absolutely roaring. Yeah. And, uh, the dog had the operation, pulled through, yeah. and now like I, I follow them on Instagram, and they're just taking the dogs on. What like people? Some people, if you're not a dog person, you don't realize how much a dog means to the family. Like it's it's another person, the yeah. family. And again, that is going to be like these kids will tell stories about because they have kids right, as well. Kids, yeah. The kids will tell, oh, we used to have a little pug called so and so, blah, blah blah blah, and that's part of their life, and they don't realize that my YouTube channel helps that dog I think it, that's it's another if and, and i'm going to consistently the more it grows the more i'm going to do stuff like that um, and we've got Good more ideas work. coming for that sort of stuff um but i think that and it's feel it's also works hand in hand as well with the youtube because people it's a feel good thing but people watch it because it makes them feel good and again it makes more connection for me shows exactly what i'm like really like sort of thing and then they invest in it and they enjoy it it makes you feel something watching the videos love everyone everyone loves that because people stuff. i guess they say you're a likable guy and people want to be in a situation where they can help someone yeah that's like it said, they want to be they want to be you i they mean why, have those cars why get, thing, yeah. like i don't need a a huge house now or anything so what like i i enjoy what i do now like there may be one day where i want to buy like a a bigger house or something like that but at the minute, if I can change all these different people that are watching me life and what they do, or just have a little impact, I thought that's just Because you're still so quite young, aren't you? How old are you? 20, 28 now. You have to think about that. Yeah, 28. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. You said 26. 28 yeah, he's still lost young. to you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But yeah, so I, and again, with the YouTube, you, you grow, I've grown like rapidly, but at the same time, you can drop off like that. So if I can do what, that's why I just try and so this take advantage of everything that I can do What now. I was going to ask now is like, what is next? Like. I'm not saying next week or two weeks' time. How do you see it in the next that, three to I get four? asked this by agencies. They're like, what's your main goal? Do you want to get on TV? Do you want to do this? I said, TV this happens so it. quick, I do not know. <laughs> like, I, I, I wing it as I go along, and I do not know. Cause, You're loving life. Yeah, yeah. I, I love what I do at the minute, and everything happens for a reason. Everything falls in place for one reason or the other, and something will come up that I can jump upon. But I do love this youtube stuff youtube could change the goalposts at any point i yeah. know that but my goal at the minute is i still like although people think oh, i've got a massive following i think it's so small compared to like other people at the minute i do want especially to, the ones in the states you're yeah i need yeah. to grow the audience as big as possible that's my main goal because then you know if youtube does fall off yeah i've still got that following people still w will follow whatever i do but whether it's youtube or not youtube it's it, I've got that following, um, so that my main goal is, I mean, is building that up, and that's by doing as many different cars as possible and doing as many different things with them as possible. So it attracts loads of different types of audience, travelling here, travelling there. Um, but yeah, I think just to grow. But I'd like to, I'd like to do a bit. I mean, it does me in sometimes working on Crash Damage Car every single day because it, it, you don't want it to feel like a job at the end of the day. I don't want to be going in. I've got to fix this. Got to fix that. I, I do enjoy it, but you don't want to be doing it every day. So I, I do like video wise. I'm thinking about like mixing things up, doing bits of. I like to do more road trips. But obviously, we you can't. can travel soon. So yeah, November is uh, SEMA in the US in yeah, Las Vegas. That sort of stuff. And no, we, we've had an idea. We're doing stuff with like racing and drifting and that sort of stuff as well. But again, I have. I used to be when I well when I was like nineteen twenty I had like a plan for like years. This is what I'm going to do. I'm saving every single penny I earn. Every time I get enough for a house deposit, I buy a house, I rent it out, I do it up, rent it out, go again, go again, go again, go again, keep going until I'm thirty odd or whatever, and I can live off the rent. And I knew what I was going to do, and I was sticking to that. And then this YouTube thing happened, and <laughs> like that. <laughs> You're just doing well. It's not yeah, a bad I thing. just don't know. Like I just now I just do what I enjoy. Do what you enjoy. That's cool. And then tell you. Good saying for life. You know, yeah, do what you just, enjoy and you never do work a day in your life. Yeah, do what you enjoy, do what feels right. There's too many people go into a nine to five job every single day because they feel like they have to. 
like they feel like I have to go here and earn the money and come. I know some people have commitments and this sort of stuff to do, but like working in nine to five, I worked in my nine to five for like four years, and those four years went so quickly. And the only thing was changed was the conversation in the office and. Pe people I was working with have worked there years and years and years. It's the same thing. And yeah. What did yeah, you have for dinner last night? That's yeah. it, yeah. What do you have? Well, what's this person doing? What's that person doing? And yeah, yeah. that's the only thing that changes. And like, I don't want to end up like that. I don't want to end up 70 years old thinking, What did I do? You know what? I wish I could, I, I wish I would have quit my job to do that YouTube thing. It might have, it might have worked. Like, that's, you only literally get one chance to do it. So why not? What? Why not? I think that's that's right. Right. And, and I must say, you know, I really enjoy the channel. I, I think you're very personable and um, of course if you don't already but you probably already do as most of the industry does give Matt Armstrong a follow on YouTube <laughs> yeah. yeah we need to build it up yeah, yeah we need to build it up <laughs> more cars more cars so everyone thanks again for listening uh, thanks again to Liberty Walk Caf for letting us have it thanks to Monster Energy um, I think these guys have been drinking it um, thanks for Matt for coming down um, it's quite a long podcast I had loads yeah. more things I could ask you but we don't have <laughs> to yeah. yeah we could yeah. Do. Uh, maybe we'll get you down another one or, or something like that maybe another time but um, thanks again to everyone for watching please make sure you like share subscribe and follow us on individual socials we'll be down below thank thanks you thanks a lot <laughs> <laughs>